there's just something about knowing you're the first person to ever really know, whatever silly little thing it is, it's addictive. I'm Bob Lefkowitz. I'm a professor of medicine and biochemistry at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. I'm also the, uh, an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, uh, and I won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2012. And what did you win the prize for? I won the prize for identifying and isolating receptors on cells for hormones and drugs. And your research was done quite a, quite a while ago. Well, it's been going on for almost 50 years, but I think the most seminal contributions I made were probably in the late 80s, uh, mid-late 80s and into the 90s. So uh, it was a good while until the prize recognized that work, which is not uncommon, I would point out. And could you tell me something about the research and what made it, so the Nobel Prize isn't just for fascinating science discoveries, but it's uh, specifically for science discoveries that also are of benefit to mankind. mankind right. So tell me a little bit about the research and how it uh, qualifies for that. So when I first began the work about 50 years ago, there was really no consensus that there was such a thing as a receptor for a hormone or a neurotransmitter or a drug. Uh, so what do we mean by a receptor? The, the idea that there was a specific site on a cell that a molecule, say like adrenaline or histamine, uh, or serotonin or other uh, neurochemicals that our body makes, uh, that there was a site that such a thing might fit into by which the cell could recognize it, much the way a key fits into a lock. Uh, but based on evidence that had been published by others, I believed strongly that this was the case. So as a young scientist uh, in the late 60s and early 70s, I set out to see if I could develop convincing evidence that such receptor sites existed. I was successful uh, using as a model system primarily receptors for adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are called adrenergic receptors from adrenaline. And I studied these for many years. I was able to first develop means of demonstrating that they existed. Then I was able to purify them, study their chemical nature, uh, and in the process discovered that these receptors were very closely related to all kinds of other receptors. That is to say, the receptors for adrenaline were very, very similar to those for serotonin, histamine, dopamine. Then it turned out they were very similar to the receptors in our nose with which we smell, and the receptors in our tongues with which we taste. And so this receptor family turned out to be huge, a thousand different receptors. But why, you might say, well, why is this of any benefit to mankind? The answer is that these receptors uh, can be targeted for drugs. And in fact, uh, about a third of all drugs used in clinical medicine today uh, target these receptors. Uh, and there are two ways that a, uh, a drug could target such a receptor. It can target it as what we call an agonist. That means something which stimulates the receptors. That is to say, you could think of it as a key, which fits into the lock, which is the receptor, then turns it, something happens, the door opens. Uh, in the case of adrenaline, the door opening might be the uh, signal to make the heart beat more strongly uh, and more rapidly. But drugs can also target the receptors as antagonists, which means they block the receptors without doing anything by themselves. Think about something which uh, is a key which fits into the lock, but then you can't turn it. Uh, say it breaks off in the lock. Well, it's not doing anything, but now if you have a real key, that can't get in there either, so it blocks the actions. Think of things like beta blockers or antihistamines. Well, to make a long story short, as I said, about a third of all drugs target this large receptor family, which we discovered, uh, and that, that's where the, the benefit to mankind part comes in. So really, at the time, in the 60s, the idea of receptors, they it wasn't established not at all at all not at all but you had a feeling and you went looking for them. correct exactly right was there an aha moment like that that after how much time was there a moment that you got very excited about can you describe uh, yes such I a mean, moment? I, there, were, there were many such moments uh along the way but one of the first ones was when i succeeded 
this would have been about 1974, in radioactively labeling uh, a, a drug which seemed to, was known to block the actions of adrenaline. So that would be what we today call a beta adrenergic antagonist or a beta blocker for short. And I had radioactively labeled it and I was able to demonstrate that it bound, stuck to, membranes derived from various tissues, like the heart. And then I looked at the ability of drugs like adrenaline and noradrenaline and other beta blockers to prevent that binding, which they would only do if they were all binding to the same site. Uh, and in fact, they did. And I realized in that moment, yes, for the first time, I had actually labeled, if you will. I had a probe which was sticking to this mythical receptor. So that was the first moment that I really knew that we had it. Now, it would be years before I could convince the scientific community. Uh, you know, some were convinced right at the get-go. Oh, he's got it. But others, it took years. Uh, and so we took one experiment after another experiment after another experiment. And each one, you know, you'd win over a certain number of people. And then, you know, along the way, we, we won them all over. What is it that you love about science? I think it's, it's frankly, it's the high of making even the tiniest discovery. Uh, and in a sense, every time you do an experiment, there's a discovery, even if the discovery is this was a stupid experiment uh, or the experiment didn't work. But there's just something about knowing you're the first person to ever really know whatever silly little thing it is. It's addictive.